Film has an almost magical look that many of us can't get enough of. The real question is, can software nail that analog look, or is it nothing more than a cheap imitation? But first, which of these photos is real film, and which one is digital? Here's another set. One is film, one is fake. Put your best guesses in the comments, and I'll revisit this later. If those examples didn't already give you your answer, by the end of this video, you'll not only know if the latest in film emulation technology is up to the task, but if it's worth your time and money. The software I use to make those digital film-like photos is called Dehancer. For the sake of full transparency, I want to let you know that Dehancer reached out to me and asked if I'd give their plugin a try. Dehancer provided me with a free license for their software, but they didn't tell me what to say and they didn't get to see this video before it went out. They specifically asked me for an honest review and I wouldn't have it any other way. You can get a free trial at dehancer.com. It's fully featured. The only thing you're gonna have is a watermark until you upgrade. With that out of the way, what exactly is Dehancer? Dehancer is film emulation software for both photo and video, designed to give an authentic analog look to digital media. They use a very cool and seriously nerdy process of extensive lab research and mathematical modeling to develop their film profiles. Dehancer offers over 60 film profiles, including modern motion picture stocks, discontinued motion picture stocks, classic color negative stocks, slide film, including favorites like Velvia, Provia, classic black and white stocks, some fun ones like Lomachrome Purple or Cinestill 800T, and some really old cool processes like Ambrotype. Dehancer also adds a bunch of customizable analog style effects. Film grain, which is a lot different digital noise, as film photos are made up entirely of grain. They've tried to replicate that as best they can by reconstructing the entire image out of grain. Just like with real film, the size of the grain gets bigger with increased ISO or film speed, and the film grain becomes more noticeable on smaller film formats. Halation, this is a fun one, but can get crazy if you crank it up too high. These are the red-orange halos around very bright light sources in some types of film. In real film, it's caused when light passes through the emulsion, bounces off the backing in the film, or some part of the camera behind the film, then passes back through the emulsion in the opposite direction, disproportionately affecting the red layer in most cases, leading to this red-orange glow. Some films like Cinestill don't have an anti-halation layer, and that's one of the appeals to those films. Bloom, which is a glow effect from light bleeding from really bright light sources into the adjacent areas. This is an optical effect that you'll see more with some lenses than others. Film damage, including dust, hairs, scratches, all the stuff you can get on your film if you're not meticulously careful about cleaning it. So if you're looking for a grungy, left the film in the shed for 10 years kind of look, there you go. Film breath, which is subtle changes in exposure, contrast, and color between frames in a motion picture. Gate weave, which is a subtle movement of the frame due to the film imperfectly moving through a mechanical motion picture projector. Overscan, which is when a larger area of the film is scanned than just the frame. This reveals perforations, inner frame space, and maybe some other frames. And they have many different motion picture film formats available for overscan, as well as all these other features. The motion picture ones are cool, but I, I wish they'd include some more photographic formats on things like overscan. All of these effects are extremely customizable. Many of them have presets for different film formats. Let's look at some examples of what Dehancer can do, and then we can get into how the magic happens. The Dehancer plugin is available for all these applications on multiple platforms, as well as a standalone iOS app and an online in-browser editor. I personally tested Dehancer in these applications and platforms. So where to start with all these Dehancer plugins? There's a ton of them. In my opinion, the easiest, most user-friendly way to use Dehancer is through the online in-browser plugin. It requires no special hardware, just a modern browser, and it can benefit from things like a GPU if you do have one, but it's not required. You can find it at online.dehancer.com. You just upload a photo. It can take raw photos in the form of DNG, or you can convert raws into TIFFs. You can also upload a compressed photo like JPEG, and that'll work just fine. But the basic process is you upload a photo, you select a film stock through this really nice visual interface. 
that really easily lets you pick and choose and distinguish what are the differences between the film stocks. You can just visually look, pick one you like, and you're ready to go. And then you can use the same intuitive visual process to tweak things like contrast, light, color, tint. I think this really visual based workflow is what makes the Dehancer online plugin so accessible, so user friendly and so good in my opinion, especially if you're not already invested in professional video or photo editing software. You can also add effects and do some fine tweaking of settings. The online editor does have less features and is not quite as powerful as the other desktop applications, but it does a lot. Once you finish adjusting your image, you can download it. You have several different options. You can download an uncompressed TIFF, a full-size JPEG, or reduced size JPEG. That's a perfect size to just share directly to social media. Almost anyone will be able to emulate film in minutes with the online plugin. Here's a couple examples that I made using the online plugin. The iOS app adds the ability to edit video, adds the ability to not only just use presets, but select individual film stocks and create a custom film emulation, fine tune just about everything within the app. You can also export video in different sizes and formats. You render it right there in app. Here's some examples from the mobile app. I spent most of my time in Lightroom Classic. Let me show you my typical workflow. We're gonna edit a raw photo. JPEGs work fine too but shooting raw gives you more room to recover the highlights. For photos, Dehancer recommends some settings for pre-processing. Use the Adobe standard raw profile, reduce contrast, exposure, bring up the blacks. This leaves more room for the highlights. You'll also wanna turn off sharpening and noise reduction as those can interfere with some effects. Then open Dehancer by right-clicking on the photo, choosing Edit In and Dehancer. Make sure you're opening it as a 16-bit TIFF once in the plugin, the first thing to do is make any technical corrections to the file if there's anything obviously wrong with exposure or white balance. Then choose a preset or start from scratch by picking a film profile. That's what I'm going to do. Once a film is selected, the next step is to push or pull the film, affecting contrast and color. This achieves a similar effect to push or pull processing with real film. Then use expand to set the black and white points to fit the profile within the color space and avoid clipping. Then I move on to print settings to make creative adjustments like print medium and exposure. Afterwards, revisiting expand as print changes the exposure and contrast. Keep in mind that you may need to revisit this multiple times throughout the process. Then I move on to the color head to make any color and tone adjustments. The CMY color head is modeled after a real film enlarger. Beyond color, there's also tone controls that you can use to get a really unique look. Then it's time to apply any additional effects. Film grain, in my opinion, is one of the coolest effects, giving you control over not only grain size and amount, but its prevalence in the shadows, midtones, and highlights, making it much more true to real film. One of the most helpful tools for getting an authentic analog look with the smooth highlight roll-off typical of negative films is the film compressor. Then after some fine tuning, I can save the image, leaving us with the film emulation and the original raw stack in Lightroom. One important thing to note is Lightroom can't reopen an edited TIFF from Dehancer. So if you want to make changes later, you'll need to open the raw file back up and apply the previous settings. Or even better, save a preset to use at any time. Here's a quick before and after of the photo I just edited. And by the way, if you decide to buy Dehancer after trying it out for free, I've got a discount code, NFS10, which gets you 10% off any Dehancer license at checkout after you create an account. When you use the code, I earn a small commission, which helps support the channel. Okay, let's get into video editing. I'm a photographer first, so I tend to keep my video editing very simple. So I am not gonna pretend I know what I'm doing with color grading on video. So instead, I decided to make a retro style emulated Super 8 home movie. I tried out 30 different Dehancer film profiles, put it all over music. I think that was the most fun I had throughout this whole project. I'm gonna link it after this video. So my experience in Premiere was similar, but a bit different in Lightroom. I think one of the things I really liked is it doesn't have those quirks with Lightroom. You can put on a film simulation, you can edit it, you can come back to it again and again put it on an adjustment layer, drag it over multiple clips, 
So that works really well. The other thing with the Premiere One is it doesn't contain any presets. You can save your own, but it doesn't come with any made by the Dehancer team. The video editing side of things is where performance really comes into play. That means a dedicated GPU, lots of RAM. I had a fairly good experience, but I was mostly editing 1080p HD footage. I had my previews at half resolution and I've got a RTX 3060 system right after changing settings, especially some of the heavier ones like halation and grain. It would choke up for a second or two, would drop below real time momentarily. But once everything settled down, I could scrub through pretty much in real time. But if you're doing 4K, 6K, or higher, uh, well, if you're doing that, you probably already have a pretty beefy GPU. So just something to keep in mind. Let's get back to the opening photos. And I really did this matching just to kind of, just to kind of see if I could and kind of a, a test for the software. I want to see like, well, can it match lab scan? In my mind, I thought that was a really good test, but it kind of ended up just being a test of my own patience. Like color matching is hard. The biggest issue I ran into was getting the color and saturation of the sky just right. Quick note from editing Nick. After doing a lot more of this since I filmed, I realized this is, isn't so much a Dehancer issue as it is a color matching issue. Dehancer does really well with the film-like stuff, like the highlight roll-off, dynamic range, contrast, and effects, but matching a digital edit to a specific lab scan, that's really tough. And, and honestly, it's, it's, it's not something I'd normally do. And just after this, I'll, I'll explain why matching lab scans exactly probably doesn't really matter much at all. If you're dead set on matching lab scans, Here's my noob colorist advice. You're gonna wanna get as close as you can in Dehancer, focusing more on effects and the film-like look. And if you can't get 100% on color, that's okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna export the photo from Dehancer, open it up in Lightroom or whatever software you like and fine tune the color there. Now, if any of those additional adjustments you're gonna make outside of Dehancer are going to meaningfully change brightness and contrast, what you'll probably want to do is disable effects like grain, bloom, halation, export the photo, do those edits, bring it back into Dehancer, and then only apply those effects on their own. And that's because effects like grain, halation, bloom are applied differently across highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if you want the most accurate look, I think that's probably the way to do it. Another thing that really does help when you're aiming for an authentic analog look is to understand how different types of film behave. For example, negative film is very forgiving of overexposure and has a wide latitude leading to that characteristic highlight roll off, whereas slide film has a much narrower latitude leading to the highlights easily getting blown out with overexposure. So if you want your edits to feel closer to film, think about which of those behaviors you're trying to emulate. All right, back to other me. The idea of having like the look of a certain film, like Gold 200 looks exactly like this, or Fuji 400 looks exactly like this. It's, I mean, each film has its own unique characteristics, but like one look, it's kind of not really a thing. There's so much modification you can make in the printing or scanning. A film negative is much like a digital raw in that it has to be converted before it's the final image. And that process of conversion, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made about contrast, white balance, saturation. And it's all subjective. A human is involved in that process most of the time. And just to show you how much of a difference that is, I've got these two scans, the same frame from the same roll of film, done at the same lab, just on a different day. I'm happy I got close with matching the film, but I'm not really that disappointed that it's not exact. And I, I think the cool thing about Dehancer is you, you have the control to make it look however you want. And you have the potential to take it much further than an analog process and really get creative. I was a little skeptical going into this at first because I'm, I'm basically allergic to editing. I, I try and minimize my time editing as much as possible. I ended up spending hours and hours and hours playing around with this thing. Yeah, so who's Dehancer really for? I think it's for photographers and videographers who want to get an authentic analog look in their digital workflow, but 
want more than just a preset or a filter and want ultimate controls, the answer is great for that. There's almost infinite tunability and controllability with the look. And if that's you, I think you'd really enjoy Dehancer. I think the great thing that Dehancer has done is you can download all of their products for free, try them out. They're fully functional, minus creating LUTs on the video side, but the only thing you're gonna deal with is a watermark. So what I'd say is go try it out, see what you think, and then that way you really know if Dehancer is a good fit for you or not. There is a pretty steep learning curve, at least on the professional plugins. They have excellent documentation, it is very doable, but just, just factor that in, that you will need to spend some time getting comfortable with it to really be proficient. The desktop software does require some serious hardware, so you will want to check your system specs. I genuinely do believe that Dehancer absolutely lives up to the marketing. It really does deliver an authentic film-like experience that is damn close to film. I struggled to get it 100% there, but it is really close. Like, impressively so. Like, closer than I ever could have imagined. The online editor is super approachable and has a great user interface. Probably my favorite user interface out of all of them. That and the iOS app are great because they don't require any special hardware. But that brings me to my one major complaint. I really want to see a lower cost standalone option for that online editor because I think for I think for casual photo editors, people that don't have Photoshop or Lightroom, I think your presets are great. And I think there's a ton of people who would love to use that online editor, but can't aren't gonna be able to justify paying for the full photo subscription that comes with all the plugins for the pro apps. I think you'd open the doors to a whole new audience. Thanks to Dehancer for giving me the chance to try out the film emulation software. I really had a lot of fun trying it out, especially the video side of things, which kind of surprised me. I'm normally not a fan of video editing. I see it more as a necessity than something I love to do. If you have any questions about Dehancer otherwise, any suggestions for what you'd like to see in future videos, let me know down in the comments. I really love hearing from you. And make sure to check out the retro home movie I made with Dehancer that'll be right here, linked after the video. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.